I'm Clive James, founder and chairman of ISA. Thank you for joining me today to learn more about the status of biotech crop production in 2008. Biotech crops experienced another year of strong growth in 2008. But more importantly, the crops are poised for a second wave of strong adoption. In 2008, there were an additional 1.3 million biotech crop farmers. 10.7 million more hectares of biotech crops were planted. And three new countries grew them for the first time. In total, 13.3 million farmers in 25 countries planted 125 million hectares of biotech crops. That is the sixth largest hectare growth in 13 years of reporting. It's also important to note that biotech crops are now planted in 25 countries around the world, an historical milestone. 15 are developing countries and 10 are industrialized nations. In 2008, we saw significant barriers to biotech crop production in Africa begin to fall. In North Africa, Egypt planted 700 hectares of Bt maize for the first time in 2008. Notably, this is the first biotech crop to be planted in the Arab countries. In the West, Burkina Faso began planting 8,500 hectares of Bt cotton for seed multiplication and commercialization. Thus, in Africa, Egypt and Burkina Faso now join South Africa, which gained almost a quarter billion dollars in 2007 alone from biotech maize, cotton and soybeans. Experiences in these new regional footholds in Africa will help neighboring countries learn by example. Already we are seeing this occur, as Kenya, Mali and Togo have recently passed their biosafety laws. Uganda, Malawi and others are also showing a keen interest in the technology. There are a variety of other indicators that point toward the emerging second wave of adoption. The two billionth cumulative acre of biotech crops was planted in 2008, just three short years after the first billionth acre was planted in 2005, a milestone that required a decade to achieve. In addition to Egypt and Burkina Faso, Bolivia was the third new country to plant biotech crops in 2008. Notably, Bolivia becomes the ninth country in Latin America to adopt biotech crops. New biotech crops were also approved for planting in countries with previous experience with other biotech crops. Brazil, the world's third largest maize grower with 13 million hectares, planted 1.3 million hectares of Bt maize, while Australia planted Roundup Ready canola for the first time. A new biotech crop was also approved for use in 2008. Herbicide-tolerant sugar beet was planted in the US and Canada. Approximately 258,000 hectares, or 59% of the US crop, was planted to Roundup Ready sugar beet. This is the highest ever adoption level for any launch. This signals a strong desire among growers for the technology. Accordingly, Roundup Ready sugar beet is expected to reach an unprecedented 90% adoption in 2009. That's only its second year of cultivation. Finally, new data became available in 2008, suggesting that the number of farmers benefiting from biotech crops may soon jump sharply. Initial reports from China indicate that the use of Bt cotton to control the ballworm is also suppressing the pest in other crops like maize, wheat and vegetables, allowing a potential 10 million additional growers in China alone to benefit from this technology. Strong political will and substantial investments are important new catalysts driving biotech crops as they are increasingly being viewed by many as a tool to help solve critical social issues. Leaders in India and China have put substantial emphasis on using biotechnology to create pest-resistant food crops that emulate 
the remarkable successes they've experienced with BT Cotton. Biotech rice, already developed and field tested in China, has the potential to increase net income by approximately $100 per hectare, or $4 billion annually for the 110 million rice households in China, which account for almost half a billion beneficiaries. This new political will and interest in the role that biotech crops can play in increasing food availability, security and affordability is critically important and can drive strong adoption between now and 2015, the Millennium Development Goal year. In 2008, the top eight countries each grew more than one million hectares. In decreasing order of hectares, they were the USA at 62.5 million hectares, Argentina at 21 million, Brazil at 15.8, India at 7.6, Canada at 7.6, China at 3.8 million, Paraguay at 2.7 million, and South Africa at 1.8 million hectares. The remaining 17 countries, which grew biotech crops in 2008, in decreasing order of hectares were Uruguay, Bolivia, Philippines, Australia, Mexico, Spain, Chile, Colombia, Honduras, Burkina Faso, Czech Republic, Romania, Portugal, Germany, Slovakia, Poland and Egypt. In 2008, seven of the 27 countries in the European Union officially planted BT maize on a commercial basis. Despite the fact that French farmers quadrupled their BT maize plantings to 22,000 hectares in 2007, they were prohibited from growing BT maize in 2008. In the EU, BT maize plantings in 2008 remained at approximately the same level, 107,719 hectares compared with 110, 818,000 in 2007, only a 2 to 3 percent difference. What is noteworthy is that every single one of the seven EU countries increased their BT maize hectares for an overall increase of 21 percent in the seven countries, according to our ISA estimate, which is exactly the same as the estimate of 21 percent increase used by the EU Commission. ISA predicts an additional 15 countries will plant biotech crops by 2015, to total 200 million hectares. New countries expected to commercialize biotech crops include six or more in Africa, three to four in Asia, and up to six in Eastern Europe, including Russia, where a biotech potato is at an advanced stage of development. Several new crops are expected to gain approval by 2015, with insect and disease resistant biotech rice already extensively field tested in China. Golden rice is also expected in Asia around 2011, and Phytase maize in China in the next few months. Other crops nearing approval include biotech potatoes, sugarcane, and bananas. And BT eggplant, an important vegetable food crop, which has the potential to benefit up to 1.4 million small farmers in India alone, plus a legion of their counterparts in Bangladesh and the Philippines. Rice as a biotech crop and drought tolerance as a trait in maize and other crops will be seminal for driving further adoption of biotech crops globally by 2015. This is the Millennium Development Goal year, when global society has pledged to cut poverty by half, from 1.3 billion to 650 million. I am cautiously optimistic that biotech crops planted by additional millions of small and very poor farmers between now and 2015 have the potential 
to make a significant contribution to the humanitarian goal of alleviating poverty by 50% by 2015. Isa views this challenge to biotech crops as a moral imperative.